Compton used to be all white. Compton was the American dream. Sunny California with a palm tree in the front yard, the camper, the boat. Temptingly close to the Los Angeles ghetto in the 50s and 60s, it became the black American dream. Open housing paved the way as middle class blacks flooded into the city. Whites don't buy houses in Compton anymore. Uh, oh, white. white flight. I, I, first off, is it true that, that the uh, Bushes used to live here? Bushes used to live here in Compton. Uh, Marilyn Monroe lived in Compton. Uh, Kevin Costner got roots in Compton. Yeah, Doc. It no was, shit. It was you know long time ago, but yeah, I just did an event Saturday on the twenty seventh of October, and it was all about the history of Compton. Okay. And it showed it was the whole room was decorated with uh, memorabilia from various people who you had no idea had roots in Compton. A lot of them were white. Nice, nice. What what's the history behind Compton Country that? They call it Compton Country, I guess, with the whole ranches and... Compton has some huge lots of it, man. You know, that was one of the things that made Compton so appealing, especially to people from, from the South, because you could raise horses. They got horses or stables in Compton. Uh, you can raise chickens. You can raise kids. You know, uh, even where I lived at, which is not quite in Compton, just outside of Compton, in the unincorporated area of L.A., um, in my backyard, my daddy had chickens. We had a gar- we had a garden, and um, down the street at the dead end, there was a vacant field, and these guys would make these bootleg horse stables. And I'm not lying; every once in a while, the horse would get out, and you literally have cowboys running. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting. Come down the street with a lasso, a lasso, this motherfucker, right? <laughs> and we had to get out the streets. And my na- a lot of my neighbors had horses in their backyard, so that was all of the. Um, the early land thing, because back in the day, man, it was about land. It wasn't about a house. Mm. You know, it was all about the acreage. It was about, you know, how much land you had, your spread was, unlike today when developers right now, you know, you can, if you have a sex, everybody know you having sex. And this, you could be in a house. And, you know, shit, you can jump from one, one roof to another, like in everybody's bed. Whatever you're doing in your house, everybody know. <laughs> Did the bushes have anything to do with that ranch? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I don't know about that right there. I, 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 that was way before my time. Oh, okay. Did people from L.A. see Compton as kind of backward or country? or did other Nah, people- not really, man. Compton okay. was a place to be, dude. If you had a good aircraft job, work for the uh, shipyard or something like that, you know, that was for black middle. That was one of the first places black middle class folks could come. See, back in the day, you didn't need a college education to get a good job. You can go to uh, go to high school and learn auto mechanics, wood shop, basic tools, whatever the case may be, and go work at the the, the post office, the um, the uh, tire shop. Cause they, they had General Motors had offices at uh, factories here. Uh, they had a lot of uh, aircraft companies in Long Beach, Torrance. So that's my mom and dad both worked there for Douglas Aircraft. Okay. So you didn't have to be um, a college educated to get you a good job and retire from there. Mm. From what I understand, Compton was hustling and bustling in like the 50s and 60s. You could walk down, I don't know, pick a, pick a street. Compton Boulevard. Compton Boulevard, and there was just people shopping everywhere. Yeah. And, and then, like, it, it, they, they hit hard time in, like, the 70s and 80s and didn't really revamp until, like, Omar Bradley came in and built, you know, the, the Compton Center over there and then the, the MLK Transit. Is that an accurate portrayal of... Pretty much, man. I remember when I was coming up in Compton in the 70s, dude. Um, Compton Boulevard was the place to shop. Mm. You know, for Christmas, whatever the case may be, you can go out there. You know, they had businesses on both sides of the streets. I remember a spot called Exum's. Exum's was a spot to go to. Exum's. Um, There was a place my daddy should always go to. uh, It was it was really it was almost like Western surplus. It was called Sad Sacks. And Sad Sacks was the coolest spot in the world for me because it was junky as shit. You know, you mm. it, it was like an army surplus store. Yeah, yeah. Slash park, slash, slash uh, hardware store, slash just cool spot for a kid to get, you know, because my dad be doing stuff. I'm over there and get about to get in trouble, but the shit's already old, so you can't mess it up. <laughs> when did it hit its hard times? Do you remember it hitting a hard time? Man, uh, crack. Is that uh, what it is? Crack, about? crack. Uh, mm. Sucked the life out of Compton, dude. Mm. It was once the rich man's drug, but as crack, cocaine is cheap and abundant. And perhaps most tragically, it now threatens the future of the poor and the young. How could they have a chance when they have such a potent drug to run to in case something don't go right? 
how could they have a chance at $5 a crack? And it's changed the whole environment. And it's one of the things I talk about in my uh, presentation that um, in the 70s, you know, Compton was still relatively cool. Gangbangers was just starting to pop around. The Crips were still, you know, they was just starting to make their presence felt around 73, 74. Um, you still could go through certain neighborhoods. It wasn't nowhere near as bad as it was in the 80s. You still could walk through the neighborhoods. I remember going to my girlfriend's house. She lived off of uh, in, uh, Long Beach Boulevard. And um, right before you got to Compton Boulevard, Compton uh, to Alondra. Mm. Now the train stopped I and mean, the bus stopped at Alameda. I had to walk from Alameda to Long Beach through neighborhoods. It never had a problem. Mm. You know, and that's, you know, it was like that. And by the, by the 80s, I wouldn't, you know, dude, you had to have an armored vehicle to go through Compton. Damn, that sucks. And, and a lot of that was due to, to crack? A lot of that was due to crack because for the first time, gangs had a, had a reason to fight that was financially based. That mm -hmm. first of grant most gangs were set up Crips were set up to to defend against the police. Mm -hmm. The Bloods came had another had another origin. I don't know exactly what it was, but most of it was, was neighborhood protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh Crip was supposed to stand for community revolution something, something. and progress. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I never knew what Bloods I never knew the but they have a they have an acronym for it, but mm -hmm. uh, at that time you know, it was you know, there was they were doing that thing. It was basically territorial, mm -hmm. but when the eighties came in, it became territorial and financial. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's when it got to be super dangerous because yeah. now you got a reason. You got it's money. It's money motivated. What do you remember about the old Compton Drive-In? Ha ha! Why'd they shut it down? I mean, I think I know why they shut it down. We well, you know what, man, the Compton Drive-In, and I use this in my presentation as well, that was one of our main sources of entertainment back in the day. Before they had Netflix and chill, <laughs> we had drive-in and get your sex on, okay? Because it wasn't nothing like backseat drive-in sex. Yeah. All right. These kids don't know that. They don't know about nobody. The roof windows all foggy and shit, you know. Uh, smell like carnage. All, car, all the cars is, 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 <laughs> is just, is just wham, the wham, the wham. Okay, and you can tell who got finished first because the car stopped rocking, okay? In fact, that was an old uh, joke. If you see this uh, man a rocking, no need of knocking, okay? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. And uh, being, being that I grew up in the 70s, I had a van, so... <laughs> I was uh, that guy. You don't want to. You're, you don't. Oh, he got a fan. Oh, hell no, baby, you can't go. There. No, no, no. Too late. <laughs> but the, but the, Comp, the Compton Drive-In, man, that was a spot. You know, we had we had a lot of drive-ins in LA back then. We had the Compton Drive-In. We had the Twin View. We had the Century Drive-In, and that's where the youngsters went. You know, that's, you can get away from your mama, hang out. Uh, if you if you could get your freak on, now's the time to do it, okay? And uh, you know, and if and most of the time I didn't even see the movie, I just go to hang out. I mean, you know, it's one of those stories. I don't want to tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming they they shut it down because oh, it crack got, it and got gangs crazy, man. Because just... you know, after a while, if folks would get shot and get beat up at the driving, Damn. you couldn't buy no popcorn. Oh, man. that's fucked up. You know, and you know, and understand this, man. Understand this. The whole era of the early seventies in Compton, we had a lot of shit to do. Mm. They got they gave dancers at St. Albert's, mm. my my old elementary school. They gave dancers at Regina Chetty across the street from there. Uh, Capitol Park had sock hops with uh, KGFJ. Uh, the same thing with Luther's Park. Same thing with Gonzalez Park. So every Friday and Saturday, we had Friday or Saturday. One of the DJ, the, uh, the radio station, KGFJ, would come to Compton and throw a sock hop. And those guys like Magnif Magnificent Montague and uh, the real Tom, uh, Boss Tom Cross. Come on, girl! You just heard Marvin Gaye from the album Let's Get It On, Distant Lover. It's nonstop music on KGFJ with Tom Cross. In fact, that's why I love the first, that's why I first learned, that's why I first Fell in love with DJing, going to Camp Miller Park. Because back then, we had dances that we all did. You know, we didn't crunk and you know, we didn't twerk. Everybody had a little, you know, had this little swagger dance. Yeah. You know, it was, whatever it was, it was leaning back, whatever the case may be. We did that. I walked into Camp Miller Park, just pulled my shoes off. You had to have a tight sock game back then because you oh, okay. can't wear your shoes. So they literally, it was a sock hop. Sock hop. You had to yeah. pull your shoes off because back then, we wore 
hard sole shoes everywhere. Ah. You carried your tennis shoes. You didn't wear them. Mm -hmm. If you got caught wearing tennis shoes, you might be considered a tennis shoe pimp. What's that? And tennis shoe pimp was like the lowest, was like, less, it was like a buster. No shit. Okay, oh man, you could have caught wearing tennis shoes three, four days in a row. Damn. The players, the real players, the, 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 the gangsters, they play basketball in yeah. they in they uh, in they in they Stacy's. They take off with them dude. Wow. Remember in New Jack City? Yes. And that's the first thing that popped up. In New head. Jack City, when you come out there and see G Money, yep. he got on he got on a pair of slacks, he busting three free throws. Hey, what the fuck is up? What the fuck is up? Play ball, that's what's up. Check. Look at his feet. He ain't got no tennis shoes on. Uh -huh. He got on his he got on his goddamn his uh Giorgio Boutinis or whatever <laughs> the case they had back in the eighties. And that's how we roll. I mean, if you you better not step on them. Oh fuck, there we go. You better not step on them, uh. okay? Cats will be out there getting a ball on. I never forget, I never forget. We oh, we shit. played we played football in my street. We had uh I lived on the dead end. Mm -hmm. Half the street was, I mean, not really half, maybe eh, three quarters of the block was on the dead end. I lived on this corner, but on this side of the block, there was a dead end, and they had they had like four or five houses full of full of girls. You know, there was uh, the, the, the Thompsons and Mother Girl Sue and, and, and uh, Angie, and all the girls would sit on the brick wall fence mm -hmm. and watch us play football. Okay, and my partner Kenny, Kenny was a neighborhood uh, thug. And he got there with us, showing off. We showing off, okay? Now we got on our tennis shoes now, but Kenny, Kenny never would, he never would come out of his uh, Stacey Adams. Okay. He'd take off his shirt, have on a wife beater. And I never will forget this. Uh, Kenny got the ball, he run trying to run a play, and he slipped and fell. And when he fell, he was still running on the side. He was still, <laughs> his, 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 his feet was still running. He still running on the side. He wasn't going nowhere, but it was funny as hell. We all put our laughter. Oh, True man. story, man. That's how we did it back in the day. Hey, folks, this is Lonzo, the godfather of West Coast hip-hop. And I bet you some of y'all didn't know I had a book out, did you? Well, I do. N.W.A. Not Without Alonzo, available on Amazon.com, $14.95. But also, there is a comic book. Limited edition comic book, Hip Hop Family Tree, featuring yours truly, Lonzo in the middle, Dr. Dre and Yella. Limited edition, only available on my website, lonzowilliams.com. Now, if you want both books, The Hip Hop Family Tree and NWA, both of them, 30 bucks, go to my website, lonzowilliams.com. In the comments, put your name and what you want me to say, I'll autograph and make sure it gets to your house right away. Both books, 30 bucks, autograph, LonzoWilliams.com And if you like me, you don't have time to sit down and read like I'd like to, but I love audiobooks. That's why I put my book, N.W.A., Not Without Alonzo, on audio. That's right, but it's available only on CD Baby. Why? Because I set every track, every story to music. So as you riding down the street, listening to the stories of West Coast Hip Hop, you got some fresh new tracks to bob your head to. Available only on CD Baby, N.W.A., Not Without Alonzo. Check it out, folks. Give you something to ride to. Peace.